Hello and welcome. Behringer just released a firmware update for the UBXA and the UBXAD. And in this video, I want to share a brief overview of the new functions. Installing the firmware update takes about three minutes and you can download and install it via the Synstripe app. So let's jump right in. One of the most uh, obvious changes here, which many users were requesting, is um, a new setting for saving the atrophy settings to the patch. To do so, you go into the voice menu and then you have the option save location and you can choose between add profile. This is like it was before. Or you can now save it per patch. Just choose the entry, press select and you're set. So now you can change the atrophy settings and it will be saved with the actual preset. Another change, the atrophy settings before had over 40 entries and now it's much less. I think it's uh, 33 now. And there are also a new few ones. So for instance, you can set the envelope attack curves and also the decay curves for the VCA and also for the VCF. Let's go back. Another change is how you can program the patches now, like all parameters that were before in the atrophy settings are now directly at their destinations. So for instance, if you press and hold the oscillator one frequency button in the modulation section, you will be presented with a new entry in the menu here. Um, now it says VCO1 LFO amount and if you press select, then you can just turn the knob and widen the range or make it uh, smaller. And if you press select again, then you get back into the first level. Almost all of these buttons have uh, new functionalities now. If you press and hold, for instance, this button now says PWM1 LFO amount, PWM2 LFO amount, and so on. Um, the tunings for the oscillators, for both oscillators, the options how to tune them are also new. So if you press and hold the saw button for oscillator 1 or the saw button for oscillator 2, you get this quantize option. And if you select it, then you can choose between semitones. So now um, the frequency will be set in semitones or even free or in octaves. So you can choose between these options now, which is pretty nice. Um, the pulse width is the same as before. So if you press and hold the pulse width and turn the knob, then you set the pulse width only for this oscillator. Also, the portamentum modes are now in this menu if you press and hold the sync button. And now you see one from three. This means you have three different functions hidden in this menu, so you can turn the knob. So on first page you have the portamento modes, on the second page the portamento speed, and here the portamento spread. Um, also, which is pretty nice, before if you wanted to initialize a patch, you just pressed shift and initial, or shift and right, and then you needed to select with this encoder here OK and then press. But yeah, as the encoder is a bit fiddly, I think that's not so comfortable. So now you can just press initial two times, like one and two, and it will initialize the preset. Another new options are for the filters. So for instance, if you press and hold the oscillator one button, you can set the filter frequency range of this knob. Or if you turn the knob, you can set the pedal amount here. Here you can tweak the resonance. So you can really fine tune the resonance here in this menu. 
which is pretty nice. With this button, you can set the envelope range. So for the modulation knob, how far it modulates the filter. And here you can set options for the filter envelope or for the loudness envelope. So these are new. If you go into this menu for the filter envelope, you can flip it now, uh, which means if you, yeah, let's just set up patch. Yeah, just a simple one. And if you have like a short envelope, if you flip it, um, then you also get negative envelope modulation now. So now the attack, uh, now the, the, the decay works like an attack. And also the attack works like a decay. Like so. Let's turn it back. Um, the next option you get here is uh, flip, then repeat, which means um, it will repeat the envelope after it completes the release phase. So if I set it to on. You see, like this. It's like a, yeah, let's say it's like a delay with one repeat. But it's only repeating after you release the key. Then you have an option for re-triggering. Um, this is uh, re-triggering means if you set the envelope uh, for one voice. Um, and let's say you have a, I don't know, longer attack phase. Before, like for each voice, it was like um, it needed to complete the release phase completely. And then if you get to this to the same voice, then it would start again from attack zero, from attack level zero. But now um, you can change it if you set it to retrigger. You can hear it, um, the best if you set it to unison. So it starts on each new note. It starts from zero again. And if you set it to non re trigger, then it will pick up the voltage level where it is in this moment uh, if the release is not completed. See, like this. Yeah, the difference. Okay. Um, then there's a a looping option. Um, it will repeat after the decay time has completed. It will start again. So if you set it to loop, then it sounds like this. So it will loop, attack, and decay. Um, and finally, you have a legato option. This means if it's set to unison and play legato notes, then the envelope will not re-trigger. Let's do this. Yeah, so if you play legato notes, then the decay, yeah, it, it will just uh, not be re-triggered. And if you set legato off, then you re-trigger the envelope on each new key press. Even when played legato. Yeah, you have the same options. Um, also, if you press and hold the four pole button uh, for the loudness envelope, and 
You can also set the filter track amount if you press and hold the filter track button. Yeah, what's more, the unison button is also pretty handy now if you press and hold it. Then you can set the unison voices here direct, directly, like press and hold unison, press select, and now you can set the number of unison voices here, which is much quicker than before. And um, also for poly polyphonic voices, you can set it here. So you can set the number of polyphonic voices here, two polyphonic voices, and press select and bam, you're done. Um, yeah, there are a lot of lot more things um, that was changed that were changed, like for instance the mod wheel now. Um, before it only uh, send a MIDI control in one direction, and now it's sending MIDI controls into both directions. Like uh, doesn't matter if I if I uh, pull it down or push it up, um, it will always send a MIDI control. But um, beware. It's a different MIDI control, like in one direction it's MIDI control uh, one for modulation wheel, and in the other direction it's, uh, I think, MIDI control 31. Yeah, also the handling has a bit changed in the globals menu. For instance, yeah, if you go to Miss Kellenus, then you have a new option for the side panel. So these settings for the side panel can also be saved per patch. Um, yeah, you, then you can have the, the transpose here active. Also, you can tr uh, turn transposing via MIDI off for the MIDI keyboard sending outside and so on. Um, yeah, then there was a, some bug fixes. Um, let's see if I... Just initialize the patch. Yeah, before you had this um, annoying, annoying uh, feature that you get some kind of that you got some kind of popping noise if you turned the oscillators off. But now this is fixed, so there's no popping noise anymore, which uh, yeah, which is pretty cool for many users, I guess, and. Um, yeah, what's more, I think um, there will be an update soon for the manual or uh, for the uh, for the change log, where you can see all the changes. And um, yeah, I will work a bit with it and see how it goes. Thanks for watching.